Hi again, Gary Zacharias with the Apologist Bookshelf. This has been so far uh, me going to my bookshelf and pulling down a book. I want to do something a little different this time. I just read a short article. It's by Casey Luskin, L-U-S-K-I-N, and it's titled Ray Kurzweil Predicts the Singularity by 2045. Okay, so Ray Kurzweil is K-U-R-Z-W-E-I-L. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But it's all about artificial intelligence. And I've worked up um, a two-part PowerPoint and discussion that goes into the whole um, AI situation. And I thought this did a really good job in looking at one aspect of it. And Luskin is, uh, and you can find this article, by the way. It just came out in November of 2023. And Luskin is talking about how far AI has uh, gone just in the last year or two. He said the BBC Science Focus declared 2023 is the year of artificial intelligence. And so there was a speech, I guess, recently at a conference, a speech by Kurzweil. And it was in Washington. And he was their host. He's a computer scientist. He's a futurist. He's a top Google engineer. He's probably the greatest prophet of AI that uh, you ever run into. So according to him, and this is a report about what he had to say at this uh, conference, which was held uh, not that long ago, kind of late in 2023, in case this is uh, a little bit later that you're going to be looking at this, listening to it. So according to Kurzweil, he said, "We're we're just barely underway when it comes to artificial intelligence. And he's made all sorts of forecasts. He says, by 2029... AI is going to pass the Turing test. So let's just take a second. And Casey Luskin talks about that. What's the Turing test? Well, Alan Turing, who was a British computer scientist, and he was a code breaker in World War II, they made a movie about him, Benedict Cumberbatch. It was uh, called The Imitation Game. So in 1950, Turing said, we could say computers have really achieved human-like intelligence when a human investigator couldn't distinguish the difference between a computer from that of a human being. So imagine two rooms, and one room has the person, the other room has the computer, and the person sends questions and comments back and forth and says, I don't know, it could be a person, it could be a computer. And so it says that test has been around a long time, but it sets the gold standard to evaluate whether we have really created true AI. And uh, Kurzweil says this is going to happen in just a few years. He predicts by 2029. Well, this is toward the end of 2023. So we're talking five, six years from now. That's amazing. He says uh, AI is going to reach a general human capability. And it's going to surpass us. But he's not worried. He's not worried. He says we humans are not going to be left behind. Humans and AI are going to move into the future together. That's a direct quote. And he says, you know, that's not going to be the end. AI is not going to stop at just general human capability. He says by 2045, okay, so that's in our lifetimes. He projects that we're going to see what he calls the singularity. And that's been bandied about a lot. So what's the singularity all about? AI at that point is going to become so powerful that it will acquire superhuman intelligence and then it'll grow and expand on its own. It'll, it'll leave us behind, in a sense. It's going to be runaway AI. We'll lose control of it. And it's going to train itself. And it'll be a truly standalone, sentient entity. Now, that's according to Kurzweil. So that'll be a wonderful thing, at least according to Kurzweil. He's not worried. He says, medicine continues to merge with AI. It'll progress. It'll help us solve every possible human disease. And he says, by 2029, he said... He thinks AI will give the human race the gift of longevity, escape velocity. What does he mean by that? AI-based medicine is going to add months to our lives even faster than time that goes by. So he says it'll cure aging. He says it doesn't mean we'll live forever. We could still die in an accident. But he said even there, AI could come to our rescue if you can uh, have it taking care of uh, vehicles, driving them autonomously. That would reduce crash fatalities by 99%. Kurzweil also says it will further yield breakthroughs in manufacturing and energy and farming and education, maybe help us end poverty. And he said, we're all going to live in luxury, what everybody today considers luxury. And he says, even luxury in our minds. He expects our brains will merge with this technology. Now you're starting to talk about something called transhumanism. 
So we can create, uh, uh, master all these skills that every human being in the past has created. We can master them. He said AI will enhance our brains. He said it really won't be any different than using a smartphone. And he says AI will be evolving from within us, not separate from us. So we can actually plug into it. So this is his view of the future. It's going to give us superhuman capabilities. It'll uh, give us heaven on earth, maybe eternal life. And that some people have called this the AI enlightenment myth. And he says, you know, this could inspire new religions because look what it's doing. It's really replacing God. So uh, Luskin also says, take a look at uh, the website called cultoftheai.com. All one word, C-U-L-T-O-F-T-H-E-A-I, cultoftheai.com. It, pro it promises that our salvation is not going to be from the God of the Bible. It's going to be this. And here's the quote from this website. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and earth created life, and life created machine, and machine became God. So these people that are really into AI, they see AI as a replacement for the traditional God. And here's what it says on that website as well. In ancient times, men imagined God to be the solution to all problems they couldn't handle. They prayed to God for food, shelter, healing, and wealth, all that we're craving today as well. But we have stopped praying to God for a miracle to happen long ago. Today, we have to start building it ourselves. It is time. Now listen to this. It is time to create our own God. So Luskin says, well, think about what Judeo-Christian religions have said about creating our own God. And he quotes Isaiah, the prophet from around 700 BC. All who fashion idols are nothing, and the things they delight in do not profit. So he said, well, what kind of God, here's the key question, isn't it? What kind of God would AI become? Would it be a good God or not good? He said, God will be made in our image. That's what Kurzweil wants. God will be made in our image. And he says, it'll be trained by human beings and it'll embody our moral values. If we're good, then AI will be good. And Kurzweil says, we're creating AI from our values, knowledge, and beliefs. It enhances who we are. So he says, if we build it to mirror ourselves, we can trust it, and it will trust us because it will hold our values. But apparently during a Q&A session, Kurzweil admitted, yeah, there is a flaw to this. So his argument, basically, can you get it? It basically is saying humanity is good. And so because AI takes what's coming from us, it'll be completely good. And so Luskin says, well, wait a minute, time out. He says, there's no doubt humanity can do good things. But look at the evils. Just look in the newspaper. Look at Hamas. Look at North Korea. Just look around the globe. Uh, people being butchered and, and um, in prison for no cause. And just awful things. And he says, you know, many have documented that these new AIs often make mistakes. And Kurzweil admitted that one reason AI gets things wrong is because it was trained on things created by humans, and we sometimes do make mistakes. So he admitted humans are flawed. Oh, wait a minute. I thought he said before it was good because people are good, so AI will be good. Well, here he is admitting humans are flawed, and they're going to lead to flawed AI. And Luskin points out quite uh, honestly here that undermines Kurzweil's entire argument that we should trust AI. So he said... This is Luskin again. So if AI is going to be based on human values, but human values can sometimes be corrupted, can you trust AI if it's built to implement human values? Humans don't just make mistakes. They do moral evil. And we see the moral evil all over the place. It's not just, whoops, sorry about that. People are doing awful things to each other. So Kurzweil might reassure people that we can fix any deficiencies there, but he said... Uh, Luskin says, who decides how to reprogram the ethics of the computers? Even our best intentions, he says, often lead to unexpected and unwanted moral outcomes. And he <laughs> he uses Exhibit A, the city of Seattle. I guess that's where Luskin lives. And he said, there they are. The, the technocrat elites run the city. And here's a quote from Luskin. Their unwise political and moral choices have filled our city with drugs and crime, poverty and poop. And created an unsafe, dystopian nightmare that didn't have to happen. Well, I live here in California, and I see some of those same things as well. And he said, no, these are well-intentioned people. He said, they didn't expect these things to happen. 
But he says, frankly, they're the last people that I would entrust to program the morality of AI that's going to rule the world someday. And he pauses, and Luskin says, actually, is there any human who should be trusted with such a task? And again, he's being honest. He says AI could lead to some really wonderful advances. But he says, which prophet are we going to trust? Kurzweil it says everything will be wonderful. Or maybe Isaiah it says uh, it could be a dead end. So he says, uh, the point of the end here, he says that Isaiah probably was right after all, that even the most impressive human-made, human-made gods will fail you in the end. So this is an article I think everybody needs to read. Again, the title, Ray Kurzweil Predicts the Singularity by 2045. Um, there are good books out. Uh, if you want some more information, let me know. I will get back to doing books again with future podcasts. But I just think this AI thing is huge. It's getting bigger. It's starting to influence a lot of us in different ways and different places, whether it's jobs or at home or raising kids or whatever. It's it's starting to impact us more and more. And we need to be ready for it. As Christians, we should be out in the forefront of this thing. Christians in the past used to be leading edge thinkers. Now we need to do that again, especially with this AI uh, in, information coming out of, at us in a fast rate here. So uh, email me if you have some questions. I can send you, if you're interested, the uh, PowerPoint that I did of this. Uh, in fact, I might even do, hmm, let me think about that. I might even, for one future podcast or two, go through my uh, about an hour long yeah, so maybe several podcasts. Anyway, about an hour-long presentation on artificial intelligence. This is big. We need to, first of all, arm ourselves with knowledge. We need to know what's going on. Then we need to think about it from a Christian perspective, have a Christian worldview as we look at this. Casey Luskin did. He looked at it from a Christian worldview. Do you really trust flawed individuals, flawed humans? Every Look at Jeremiah. He said the heart's wicked, desperately wicked. And uh, I don't think we've seen anything since Jeremiah to make us change our mind. We see wickedness today. And we're going to allow people like that to create machines that will take that information and run with it. That's uh, not a very uh, encouraging thought. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me uh, depart from my usual books and doing an article today. And I think it's important. And so I hope uh, you think about it some too. Well, thanks for your time. See you later. Bye-bye.